All right, good evening, good afternoon. I call to order the regular meeting of the uh, Carabelle Community Redevelopment Agency. It's 1.30 p.m. on July the 20th, 2021. We're conducting this meeting in the Carabelle City Hall Chambers. And uh, thank you everyone for silencing your phone. Our meeting will open with a prayer by Commissioner Allen, and then I will lead the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. God and Father, we're so grateful that we have this opportunity to come together today to discuss the things that would be appropriate and to the best benefit of the citizens of this lovely city. Be with us in our judgment that we might be wise and do that which would be best in your sight and for the community that we have. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are missing the turn. Uh, yeah, we are missing the turn. But uh, hopefully, I'm trying to slow down. You'll be here before his report, but if not, we'll come back to his report. And Ms. Keisha, would you do the roll call for us, please? May. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Allen. Here. Mayor Paz. Here. Commissioner Millender. Yep. Okay. And then uh, next on the agenda is approval of the uh, past CRA meeting minutes for June 15, 2021 and July 1st, 2021. And Ms. Courtney or Keisha had a note uh, uh, mention about one of those minutes. The, the minutes are correct the way they are, but we've been trying to get the application completed with the FDOT on the retaining wall, and they said we needed a resolution or the minutes. So what we would like to do is to add in to make them more specific. Like we're not changing the motion or anything, but what I would like you to say is Bo May makes a motion to paint the wall by S. SPCH walls with the vote scene and postpone until a photo date. And then that motion died for like a second. The minutes didn't say that before, but I think we need to include that. And then Commissioner Brown motions to award the SPCH walls for the vote scene for $10,000 on the FDOT retaining wall located on Highway 98. So if we just needed to add in that extra detail so that we could send it to them and it would. So um, if y'all don't mind. The minutes were correct as they were, but we just needed to put a little more information in there. Give it a little more clarification. Is, is that okay with everyone? Sure. Okay. And thank you, Ms. Keisha, for doing the minutes. So uh, uh, we need a motion to approve or disapprove those uh, June 15th and July 2021 20, um, meeting minutes. We'll make a motion to approve with uh, modifications as suggested by the administrator. I'll second. Okay, we have that motion by uh, Commissioner Millender, second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. Okay, next we have public comment. Uh, is there any public comment? This is the time when uh, the public may speak about anything uh, relating to the CRA district that's not on this agenda today. And we have no public comment, so we'll move on to staff reports. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> we have Ms. Tammers with us today. And we'll move on to staff reports, uh, uh, our CRA director. Please. On the Veterans Memorial Wall cleaning and additional perimeter bricks, uh, Mr. Jones with John Stucco, he actually came in last week. I wasn't here, so he, he went back home. But I talked to him yesterday, and he's going to come this week and, and start with the wall. So he'll be cleaning all the <coughs> film off of it and re sealing it and so he's going to um, start that this week. Um, the update on the mural boards for each location. We are working with FDOT to get an application in. Um, they'll have to review it and approve. It's fairly detailed application. Um, we had to get some clarification on some of it. They were asking for a resolution and engineered plans and that we got that clarified and we don't need the engineered plans and the minutes will work is we won't have to do a resolution 
So, um, and we're still working with Ms. Jalen on trying to get an, an agreement with the owner so we can do the business well. Because we want to have an agreement with her before we start an agreement with the artist. Yeah, we don't want to invest $15,000 and then she decide well, she doesn't like it. it. wants to yeah. paint over it. Uh, you know, we need an agreement months. that says that she'll leave it on here for so long mm -hmm. and, and that we'll maintain it. And, so we've, we've sent her an agreement and she's reviewing it. And on our facade grants, I got an email from Ms. Karen yesterday. She says that the door has not been shipped. Um, they did receive the windows. The door has not been shipped. We arranged for the windows to be installed the first week in August. The lift will be there for pressure washing, painting, and electrical work. The plumber will be installing the water line during that week or possibly the week prior. Um, she believes that she's going to need an extension. That she reviewed her notes saying that um, the 90 day extension was approved in April and she'll just be outside of the 90 days. And she's requesting that we give a short extension, um, but that it is well on its way. It's, it's, started. And also, while you're, if you're talking about extension, Shot by the Sea thinks that they're going to need an extension as well. She said that hers is not going to start until August the 2nd. So um, her contractor and everybody, that's supposed to start August 2nd for Shot by the Sea. So do y'all want to Vote on an well, extension now and we finish the rest yeah. of it. Is that let's let her finish and see what okay. we need to do here. Um Jalen Dowden, she says that they ordered four windows and they only shipped two of them. The two windows have been installed. Um, the landscaping stud, she's waiting on the other two windows. Once they're in, um, they'll get the paint, and, and that's where she's at on her project. She has not asked for an extension. Uh, we've covered Ms. Harris. Mr. Sean O'Shea for Frank's Bait and Tackle, they're complete with all the work, so he's getting ready to submit the reimbursement forms. And since that contractor is the same one that's doing Ms. Prentice, he's now available to start on Ms. Prentice, and she says that once they pull the permits, that that should go fairly quickly. They're, they're still on, on track for their timeline. Okay, um, some of these came in like uh, Miss Karen and Miss Vicky's, and maybe it was Janlin too. Those three applied at the same time, and then Frank's Bait Shop and the Prentices, the, those were at a different time, they came later. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we, I'm just making this suggestion that we give, um, so all of these are going to end their extension in mid-August? Yes. Or do we want to maybe let's just give them another month or two months? I mean, we, really, we want everybody to finish by the end of the year. Well, yeah. No question. But Courtney, what's the latest we can extend it and still be within our budget year? We need to have it, I don't know, Keisha, what do you think, by at least mid-September? Mm -hmm. I mean, mid-September is probably not going to be able to pay it out. And pay it out. Well, I'm kind of with, I was listening to what the mayor said, and I feel the same way. People getting delivery and getting work done right now is just, it's not normal. It's, it's, it's kind of far-fetched. I'm going to make a motion that we extend any needs on the contracts to mid-September. If Keisha, you need a specific date, you can pull one. Yeah, I'm, can we do the end of August? Like the I know it. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Just, well, just because, because sometimes they can't get their paperwork right, and we have to help them, and that drags it out probably until well, mid-September. Or, or even October, <clears> because <throat> they, they just, they're just real slow with submitting their, their paperwork. Well, well, that was the reason why I formed it to begin with, a question to staff, what's the latest we can do? And if that's what staff recommends, I recommend it, and I'll modify my motion to uh, reflect that. I'll make a motion we extend any, any needs on these uh, contracts to the end of August. And, okay, uh, do we have a second? I'll second. 
Okay. Um, now I have a question for a discussion. We have a motion by Commissioner Millender and second by Commissioner Allen. Um, now, are you are you intending for all five? If necessary, yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, that's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be more I, simple. I was just trying to uniform it, okay. make it simple. I think that's in, good. Any of them that's in need, the end of August. <clears throat> to the end of August, to like the August the 30th. 31st. 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 Okay. okay, all right, let's let it be August the 31st, and that will work with me. So we have that motion then to extend all five of these three <coughs> contracts to the end of, to August 31st, 2021. Um, motion by Commissioner Millender, second by Commissioner Allen. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. Okay, and then I just wanted to follow up with Ms. Courtney when uh, Mr. Jones comes to do the, although it's out of CRA, he's going to clean the two cemetery boards. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more questions for Ms. Courtney? Okay. All right, uh, then uh, the city attorney update. All right, we um, are basically moving ahead at pace on the expansion and extension of the CRA. Um, we've sent off the notifications. The notifications were sent off to the local taxing authority um, as well as the property appraiser, and we have not received any response back. Correct. No, I have not. Yeah, so we haven't gotten any objection from them. Um, so what we would do is move forward um, on first reading of an ordinance by the city commission to memorialize the extension and expansion and I'll send that over to Keisha for what we would be up we could we could do it as first reading um, there in August um, or well first reading August second reading September and what it would do is extend the <coughs> existence of the CRA from February 1, 2022 to February 1, 2052. So 30 year extension from the old CRA, or, I mean, sorry, the original CRA was February 1, of, or sorry, it just says February of 20, I'm sorry, 1992. And so I'm just assuming, just to be safe, we'll go with the first of the month there. And that would be our extension period. And then we've all looked at the map as far as the additional surveyed area that would be um, the expansion of the CRA area. So move ahead with that ordinance. Um, just make sure you have it to me by Thursday. Very good. So that I can get it in the paper in time. Okay. And then this will just be first reading, yeah. Right. And that will be February <clears throat> of 2022. Well, when, when I say this, that? this is, and I'm, I, I know I got myself a little confused in some of the draft documents going out, but the way I'm looking at it is that the current term expires on February 1, 2022. Okay. So that's the 30 years initial. So as far as an extension, we're extending from the termination date out 30 years. <clears throat> um, but I know, obviously it's my job, so I'm, I've looked at all the documents, but if I know, Mary, you've dug into this deep too, is we don't want to... I mean, we're, we're fine, but if, if you see any issues with the dates, let me know. I, I don't. I don't. And I'm just asking because we're getting ready to move into budgets, and we're going to kind of try to know, need to know, if, when is that expansion taking effect? When can we start working outside this, um, this district that we're in? Now, I know we won't start collecting money most likely until next year, Okay, the expansion of the area occurs when we adopt this. Okay. Ordinance. So that goes into effect September. All right. And then the extension okay. um, is goes on tacked on to the end of the term, the existing term. If that makes sense. Yes. So we'll be able to tuck it in. We're on track to get it done before the new budget. That works out well. It wasn't necessarily planned that way, but works out well. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, anything else for us, sir? No. Okay. Do you all have questions for the attorney? Thank you. Thank you, sir. And
And then uh, did Mr. Messer, Mr. Messer called, he had a daughter's appointment. Okay. He was trying to get here, but it was running a little late, so he didn't know, he didn't think he was going to be able to make it. But he wanted to let y'all know if y'all had anything you know, to let me know when I can get back with him, if there's anything that needed to be done or any comments. So. I know um, the alley behind my building and then the alley off of uh, Tallahassee Street, they haven't been done in quite a while. I, I did the alley the last time for the Riverfront Festival, and it hasn't been done since then. It's the jungle. And then where's the so one um, between Ganders and the junction? That one's pretty bad. See, they cleaned it up yesterday. Oh, they did? Okay. Is that part of the CRA? I think that's just. I thought so. Yeah, the CRA actually years ago put the mill mill basketball wow. on there. Really. Well, the bear got back there. Oh, and he enjoyed himself. Yeah, he had a party. <laughs> uh, is it coming from that restaurant that's yes. there? <laughs> so, yeah. They sort they sort of cleaned it up. They they didn't really they blew it. A lot of stuff still on the ground. Yesterday. Yeah. Courtney has worked with them and worked with them. Well, it's a new restaurant. With the same uh, oh. the owner of the property, but different manager of the restaurant. And she's been with the same owner mayor. and same mayor. Same mayor. <laughs> a new <laughs> restaurant. Well, I mean, we can't work with the bear, so you know. Even though for them. For the bear? <laughs> but I can't contact the new <clears throat> restaurant okay. owner manager. I don't know. I mean, we go to the Department of uh, Professional Business and Professional Regulation and have them. They're supposed to keep that uh, dumpster locked. So okay. we had talked to the previous owner of the business. And we, we've been working with the property owner and since last year. And well, he gets it cleaned up, but then they don't keep it. Cleaned up. So just lock the lock the dumpster. Uh, then I would ask uh, Mr. Messer if he could start doing some weed spraying, like uh, spray for weeds there at the uh, in the uh, area at the corner of Marine Street and Avenue C, uh, that big open area that we have there, and uh, the 4th Street boat ramp, and uh, as it says in the specifications, all of the uh, curbs and gutters and sidewalks, all the, you know, the joints, the concrete joints, you know, spray for weeds in there. And uh, uh, we did supply him with the sufficient roundup that, you know, if he can, if he can get to that in between uh, And he's ranks. used all that because he came back and asked me where we got it and he was ordering some more okay. for him. So all right, very good. It, it, it must have worked pretty good. Yeah, it does more. work if we can get it on there. And, and, and it, uh, it's, it works well if, you, if it, it's 30 minutes, and if it rains, it still works. So don't get it on anything you want to keep. All right. Do we have anything else for Mr. Messer? Uh, we have no new business and no old business, so we're going to move right into Anovia Consulting Group's project. And Russell is uh, sick today. It's the first time I've ever known him to be sick in 11 years. We wish him well. But I'm going to be Russell. Mm -hmm. So um, item one, the Marine Street Revitalization Project. The award letter was issued on July 12, 2021. Fred Fox Enterprises will be coordinating advertising for professional services. Um, the environmental review will be conducted by Fred Fox Enterprises. This process will take six months to be reviewed and approved by the state. Once the environmental review is approved, the project may be let for bidding. It is anticipated letting will be February 2022. Construction must be completed by January 31st of 2024. Any questions on that? Item two is the Southeast Avenue A sidewalk replacement. The plans are complete and submitted. Um, we anticipate that the construction amount will be under the threshold requiring bidding. We will coordinate with Courtney to obtain price quotes from selected contractors for this work and pre present to the CRA at the next board meeting. And um, I know that Mr. Klinkenberg is still waiting to get the tree out. So he, he has hired someone to do that, but like you said, everything's 
taking a lot longer than it usually does. That's two items you can talk to them about. Yes, the tree and the broadcast trash. Item three is the landscape architectural design for military service flight poles at the Memorial Veterans Park. A landscape <coughs> architect has been contacted for this project. It's David Cowles, PLA, who also did the US 98 landscape improvement and the triangle landscape improvement projects. A task order is submitted here with it, herewith for the project for approval by the CRA board. The task order for that. Novia Consulting Group is pleased to offer the attached proposal for services on the above project. Generally, the scope of this project includes coordinating with the landscape architect, David Cowles, PLA, to develop sketches and plans for placement of military service flight poles in Veterans Park. The initial task is to develop a conceptual plan for review by the CRA or the designated individual. The concept plan will be modified based on the review by the city and a final plan developed for installation or construction. <coughs> It is understood that the landscape, sidewalk, and lighting placement may be included as part of the construction plan. The team we have assembled for this project includes one sub-consultant. The fee for this project is $1,250, which includes sub-consultant fees and reimbursable expen expenses. The fee breakdown by consultant is below for reference. It doesn't have anything below. Do, do we know if he's included underground power landscape architect will be including that. You, you requested that. I think it's a good idea for your campaign. He to sent the plans with this email, which I got just prior to the meeting, but okay. I can send them out and we can review them. Um, I, I had mentioned it to Russell. Now, whether he included it, or I don't know. You said it I did in the meeting. It, oh. And I did mention it. Well, I thought that when she said, when she was reading it, said this and this is, and understands that it may include Power. It also said we can review it once the plans are submitted and then alter it, mm -hmm. add to, take away, or throw it out, or whatever. <laughs> so um, I think I think we need to to move forward. Um, you know, so maybe we can get some some of the work done at least to, by the end of the year or some, something moving forward on it. And, and it does say it is understood that landscape, sidewalk, and lighting placement may be included as part of the construction plan. Okay. I'll we'll make a motion we proceed. I, I'm, I'm an operations guy. I like to see things get done. That's true. The government moves like my last is going up here. <laughs> but you have to kind of nudge it a little. All right. So yes, and I want I would like to see it uh, proceed. It would be nice if it could be done by the uh, end of the fiscal year, but I don't see that really, honestly. But maybe maybe we'll get surprised. Sooner the better. Yeah. So we have that motion to proceed with the uh, task order to uh, for the architect to develop the uh, plans and sketches for us. I'll second. Okay. Uh, that, okay, that motion is by uh, Commissioner Millender, second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and that motion carries. And Ms. Courtney, if you would send us a copy of his memo and uh, I just sent that out all of that good stuff that he sent with it. Okay, thank you so much. And did he send anything else along? Is there any other questions we need to send to Russell at this point? None to Russell, but I, I did have a question going back to the sidewalk, <coughs> if I may, Mayor, mm -hmm. about the tree. Are we? Is that the only holdup? I keep noticing. I look at it every day. <laughs> that tree still. No, there. he hasn't got. I mean, I don't know that he's ready to move forward. Yeah. Okay. But you said Mr. Klinkenberg had. He has asked someone to. Yes. Remove the tree. Yes. Okay. So, but when you contact him about the garbage problem, ask him what's the progress on a tree removal. 
because he just says plans are complete and he submitted them with this email. And we anticipate the construction amount will be under the threshold requiring bidding. We will coordinate with Courtney to obtain price quotes. So um, I don't think the hold up's the tree. We haven't got price quotes on doing the mitigation. I wouldn't insinuate it was. I just know that that, that will be an obstacle. It will be if they don't get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We uh, we have um, so under the threshold requiring bidding, and we have 13 uh, budgeted. So does that will we, do you think we'll have enough then budgeted? Yes. Okay. If not, we've got we can we got more. All right. Now so that's probably going to require DOT approval as well. <laughs> On uh, Avenue, uh, uh, on, on, uh, what's the, oh, I was thinking Veterans Park. Yeah. yeah. You think that's going to require DOT approval? I would think so. Veterans Park probably will, but not the trigger. There's a possibility on that. They're right of way extends. All right, then we'll move on to uh, CRA board projects and item one is discuss discussion of possible action regarding the CRA 2020-2021 expense to budget uh, as of July 16th, 2021. And uh, those were, that was circulated to you and that expense to budget is developed from Miranda's year to date that she circulated on last Friday. And um, mm -hmm. down under capital projects, there's a, a new line uh, just included in there called the Military Flagpole Memorial. Uh, and uh, the 10635 for the flagpoles was moved out of uh, other obligations and put there so that we can see and understand really where that 10635 belongs. And we can start um, seeing how this project will move along. And I suggested to just put $30,000 there for now. We don't know exactly how much it may cost and uh, if we put any sidewalks or a little walkway around or benches, we don't know what he's gonna come up with a design and the underground power. So it may be, be more, it may be less, but I think that's a fair um, amount just to put. And we've spent 10,000 of that already for, for, at this point. And of course, all of this will have to be amended at the end of the year, you know, because we've moved some expenses around and, and we've <coughs> moved some before the end of the year. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, Keisha and I looked at uh, calculating the balance forward as we get ready to, to move into our budget workshop. And uh, so that is using our actual, our budget and our actual expenses and um, our projected year end expenses uh, look like at this point, our projected year end expenses uh, will be only $262,566. Um, could be a little less, could be a little more, but right there in that area. And uh, our projected uh, balance carry forward is $253,345. Uh, as we, we carried forward money last year, $206,744. We're projected to carry money forward this year. I don't see how we could, we don't just don't have the projects for it. Uh, but we are going to have some suggestions in a few moments on projects for next year. And we're really not supposed to carry forward this high percentage of, of our budget. Um, everything is supposed to be spent in the budget year pretty much close to everything. So I'm not suggesting that we try to find something to spend it on this minute, but it's just reiterating. <laughs> so that's that. And do y'all have any questions to myself or Courtney or Keisha regarding these Okay. All right then. And there's really, I don't think there's any action that needs to be taken right now on these items. Uh, so we'll move forward to item two, which is discussion and possible action regarding attendance at the 2021 CRA conference. 
um, the CRA annual conference is October 27th through the 29th in Fort Myers. And registration is opening July the 26th, 2021. And it uh, looks like it's going to be competitive for the registration uh, and especially to stay in the hotel there. Uh, we haven't been to, well, there haven't been any, any classes offered in quite a while, and we haven't been to any CRA training in a, in a while. I know, I, I don't think Commissioner Brown, you haven't had any official CRA training, have you? I'm not. And they offer, during that uh, course, they're going to offer the um, board training uh, on Wednesday <coughs> during that the regular basic training. I think it's a three-hour class. It's very informative. I've taken it four times. Each time it helps a little bit more, and each time it's a little bit different and updates. And they had sent, one of the ladies sent something of, when we were trying to figure out if the CRA could fund, and she said that there would be, during this conference, there's going to be a, a, a legal course during this conference that will help you to better understand what CRAs can fund and what they can so we're just asking if anyone would like to attend and we would need to no. <laughs> you you would like to attend I, I would like to attend well i think that, that we looked at it and we have enough money that if everyone wanted to attend or you know three or four is i'd like to update i know it's been several years since i've had any crh training as well uh, 2015 we did some uh, serious CRA training in 2015, and that was that. So, that was time. so, I mean, the whole board could go if the whole board wants to go. We talked about if Mr. Hartman, but then we decided Mr. Hartman should pay his own. He should be a chaperone. Sorry, he should be a chaperone. <laughs> When I looked at the budget, he can't afford to go. He's already spent his budget. Yeah, money. yeah he had. <laughs> that was because of the findings of necessity. And we, we talked about that, he and Russell. Their budget was way high this year, but we knew it was going to be. We, we budgeted extra money. But uh, don't you don't you handle the CRA in another city as well? I do not. Oh, you do not? No. What? Why not? I inherited that job, and it was not within the scope of what my predecessor had done, and I did not volunteer to take that on. <laughs> All right, then. It can be a significant additional budget item. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I mean, would you be charging per hour to go there? <laughs> so, no, 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 no. no. Okay. Lawyers get a bad reputation, but I try to I try to go easy. Does that include sleeping times? I did, does okay. if I if I think about it or dream about it. <laughs> I think we had an estimate on the price per person because they have not given us the rates for the motel rooms, so we're kind of just guessing. But the the conference was I think three ninety five per person and then the mileage you know, it's 415 miles one way so that was eight but at 56 cent a mile so we had the mileage and the per diem and we had guests on a motel rate and I think it came up to just over seventeen hundred dollars a person. Okay. Um, did that include the board the CRA training class on Wednesday? I thought it was everything. I don't, I don't think we necessarily need the off-site tours, but I suppose if someone... Maybe I'll get paid. Can you send us their, uh, the information for this? Mm -hmm. uh, Florida Legal City sent it out. It's under, um, if you get a Florida <coughs> Redevelopment Association, it's under there. Just yeah, the Florida Redevelopment Association sent it, sorry. And it just says, um, The full conference registration fee for the 2021 FRA conference is $3.95 for members. 
Attendees may also choose the option to attend a single day registration Wednesday or Thursday, which is 325 for members. <coughs> FRA will also offer CRA board training class Wednesday at 8 a.m., which is $50 for members. So no, I did not include that. $50 for members and non-members. And then two off-site tours will be offered as well for a separate fee of $50 each. And we did not include that. So we'd be we need to add another $50 for a seven. Seventeen fifty a person. So we, we we need to know, you know, do we want to do we want to go, or do some people want to go, and do we do we approve this? Outward, Courtney Wood. October the twenty seventh, twenty eighth, and twenty ninth. seem to think that it's going to sell out really quickly and they're not even given the lodging information until you book the conference and then they'll send you the lodging. What city? Oh, bad. Four, four Myers. Myers. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> four Myers. Get a little ride. Yeah. And all that just got back from Fort Myers. <laughs> Been there a few times. I don't want to think about that part. I would, I would think of that Definitely, Courtney would be well to attend, and if uh, the mayor and Commissioner Brown would like to attend, I think that'd be great. I would attend if necessary, but I think that's a good representation right there. The I think it's a learning too. Uh, but yes, I learn a lot. I, yeah, I'd, I'd go if necessary, but I don't think. Yeah, it's a you know a learning opportunity, exactly. and yeah. so that uh, that's why. The whole board is is being offered, yeah. um, and we have this money that we have. That yeah, we carry right. <laughs> right. um, So you know. But it sounds like you, like you said it was a limited opportunity. It sounds like you're going to have to kind of. Uh, well, that's kind of why we're to our yeah. uh -huh. We yeah. can't. Although the re yeah. deadline to register is October the 13th, yeah. And we could wait and talk about it again in August, but we probably wouldn't be able to get in by then. But if I have a head count July 26th, when it opens up, I could go ahead and reserve. Okay, so it don't open until July 26th. Right, right. Okay. But that's just my opinion. And like I said, I'd be willing to represent the city, but if, uh, those three ladies there that are really wanting to go would be a good representation. Well, it's more than representation. It's an opportunity to learn and understand well, more. When I use the word representation, I don't mean you're going to put on a program. You're <laughs> yeah. going to bring the information back to yeah. the board. Hopefully, so. yes. <clears throat> and if the city attorney wants to go, that'd be good. Let me know. Before the 26th. Yeah, that would be helpful. This thing, and you let me know, it's I... I attended part of, of this when it was in Bay County, Panama City, City of Panama City, years, a number of years ago. It seems like yesterday, but it was probably five years ago. I always look at these conferences as an opportunity to kind of slow down and really focus on something and, yeah. and learn, right? And I think I would benefit from it. However, this is not really, the, the other piece is, I know the mayor does a very good job of getting up to speed and we have discussions afterwards on things that need to be tightened up, whatever else. Is my my only problem is my own scheduling and things like that. That I I get it would happen to me in Panama City. I almost didn't get as much out of it as I had hoped to because I'm constantly answering calls. I got judges calling, or whoever calling, and things going on, and it's I created a problem for myself of being able to shut out that for three days. I, it would be almost impossible. So, and I don't, I mean, I would pay for my own way and everything else because it would be beneficial for me. It would help me uh, get better advice to the, to the board. Um, but that's a little glimpse into my world is I don't, sometimes I'm better off when we have a specific problem, we all communicate about it and then I dive into it. I can call the redevelopment agency and everything else and get an understanding of it relatively quickly because that's, what I'm trained to do, but I agree it's the, the overview would be valuable. But as long as 
So if you have it and then we can talk and kind of communicate, which we do, then I think we get the benefit of it. And if, if the opportunity, you know, is coming at the right time that we can, the budget can afford it uh, because we're getting ready to expand. And I mean expand big and we need to learn and understand more how we can spend the, you know, how we can develop projects and projects that will be good projects that will benefit the district. So, uh, can, do we have, can we get a head count? Or you have till the 26th. Do we? I just said he'd let me know, but I guess, do we just want to approve for whoever wants to go? They can, they can let me know. It doesn't have to be. And, and Ms. Keisha, are you interested in doing it? No, thank you. I, I do three trainings a year. Okay. Uh, I'll hold down the fort. Okay. <laughs> I just got back from Fort Myers. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, do we want to motion for, and you're, you're, it's still under consideration for you yeah. at this, uh -huh. um, up to five or six people to go? We so, just considered no. Oh, y'all <laughs> <laughs> see that hat go like that? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I missed it. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> we just considered. Okay. I'm going to be sorry I said that, but go well, we don't me. need the answer today. Uh, six. We could say motion for up to six people to go. Something like that. And this does include your travel and tra you know the training <coughs> costs is all covered. So, but not the time on the road. <laughs> we still well, have to put that. Well, you yeah. the mileage. Yeah. 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 Okay. The long drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't <laughs> think about that. We keep talking about the driving. <laughs> That's the worst for me. <laughs> I'm glad it ends on Friday so I can recoup for mm -hmm. the weekend. One at a time, please. <laughs> All right, so um, does someone want to make a motion? Want me to make a motion? So we, I'll make a motion to approve that we approve up to six people to go. But can she go ahead and pay for the three that want to so we can get the ball rolling? It doesn't open oh, until July right. the 26th. Right. Okay, so motion to approve up to six people go from okay. the CRA. All right, we have that motion by uh, um, Commissioner Brown to uh, approve up to six uh, CRA board members to attend uh, this year's conference. I'll say. Okay, and that motion is seconded by Commissioner Millender. Is there any further discussion? It's down. Yes, I six, that. six people. <laughs> six, 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 well, the CRA director. Um, and that second is by uh, Commissioner, motion by Commissioner Brown, second by Commissioner Millender. Is there any other discussion? So if you don't hear back from them on the 26th, you'll just go ahead and book us? Can I book Mr. Millender? As of now, that's, I've got four, and then I can. You guys can get back with me. Yeah, I'll hold down the floor. Cal was already saying no, so thank you for changing your mind. All right. Any any other discussion? Then? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And that motion carries. All right. Um, then the next item, uh, item three is discussion possible action regarding the 2021-2022 CRA budget and it's got two portions to it. Uh, the one is uh, review the CRA uh, capital project suggestions for the 2021-2022 CRA budget and then number two is schedule a CRA 2021-22 budget workshop in August. 
So of course, uh, we'll take number one, uh, and and let's just uh, review and and have some suggestions uh, for projects that the CRA could do in the budget year coming up. And I brought my list right here. So I hope some of you all thought about this and um, have some ideas for our, our budget coming up. Uh, Keisha and I kind of looked at what we might have to spend, just, uh, just a little kind of a to carry forward is probably going to be in the $600,000 range, somewhere around in there. And then the year after that is going to be even more because um, we'll have income from, not a lot of income, but we, with the way the property prices are increasing the property values, we should have some income from the expanded district. But it'll take five to six years before you really begin realizing a significant amount from the expanded district. So do y'all have a, a list to, to review? Suggestions? So since we're expanding and that'll be around <coughs> September, our list can also include this expanded area, correct? That's the, what I understood from Mr. Hartman earlier when I asked about his the expansion, and he said the expansion would take effect after our ordinance. That's exactly, upon ordinance adoption, um, so it actually it'll slip right in at the beginning of the of the new budget year, and the trick is, this will be a headache for Keisha, because when we, in the expanded area, we have a new um, baseline date. So that has to be kept separate from the baseline date, obviously. The to, for the other, the old portion of the old area. But can the money be spent in the new one? Yes. But it's still one area. It's still one area. It's just, you, you don't get the, you can't go back to your old baseline date. Your tax right. increment uh, baseline for, for the, the new original area. is this one, 92, and then it will be, um, uh, what will it be? So when the city's paying in, we'll be paying in two times because we'll have to pay in based on the millage that was capped, mm -hmm. um, the baseline. And 92. And 92 and then they all. Yep. So and those parcel ID numbers we had attached, that, that's just a bit of an additional hassle. I have a couple of ideas. All right, then. Um, I know I brought this up to you guys before, but Lighting at Sands Park. We already have lighting around the trail. I would like for it to be turned on so that during the hot months, people can walk in the evenings, and in the winter time when it gets dark at five o'clock, can still walk after you get off work. We probably need lighting. What's down yeah. there is solar. Solar. Uh -huh. there, okay. Yeah, it's not in ground. It's just solar lights. That's something. I've had people approach me about it, it's older people that want to walk in the evenings because it's too hot. And, I mean, I would like to utilize it myself. <coughs> so, I don't now, the parks do close at sundown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that could be why there's not lighting there now. Well, we have lights. I mean, it just so. Yeah, there's solar lights and they've been down there. Probably 13 years, or I mean, they probably but they were more for decorations than to actually light it up at night. <coughs> they didn't put out a lot of light. But there's oh. something. I mean, we could consider putting. Uh, are there street lights down there? Not um, enough to. Maybe a couple of three. Like more we did the new lighting that really lights. Yeah, it. some yeah. kind of a security style lighting, even to help for security. Certainly, that's a good, that's, you know, legitimate. And then um, the Public Works building wasn't in the CRA district before, but it will be, so maybe we could um, put some money aside to help with renovating that. I know we have money in the, the regular budget for the roof. But right. Hang on, we, um, one thing, um, and probably the conference will play this one out. We can't, we won't be able to spend CRA money on the city <coughs> stuff. And, and 
we can, uh, if we get to go to the conference, that would be one of the main things. We would get someone to make it clear to us. Exactly where money can be spent. Yes. Share expenses. Okay. Yeah. But that's that's good. We had we had that. Uh, we did put it on the last budget or budget this year and removed it to put the new roof on it. But we realized we reminded ourselves that the CRA can't spend money uh, on improvements or regular maintenance and repairs on city-owned buildings. So, but we can the, on the other city. Uh, Parks and infrastructure, uh, yeah. certainly uh, infrastructure. infrastructure yeah. uh, so maybe to um, clear some of the landscaping, could we use it for that? For additional parking and things like that, just not the structure? It's, it's possible to work on the grounds, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like enhancement of the grounds or something like that. To, okay. Okay. And we, we need to ask, you know, when we go. Yes, ma'am. Are we still in line for getting the money to do the final um, DEP improvement to that property? Of, you're talking the toxic about ground. the toxic ground stuff. Are we still? I'm not understanding is we we didn't have to do anything else. Down the list. We didn't have to do anything, and they were going to do it all for us and let us know if we needed to do it. So if depending on where they were. The problem was up around the, around the buildings. So if you did stuff in the other parts, it shouldn't be a problem. And I remember we had a, a phone call, I believe a phone conference, I believe it was with ARPC earlier in the year, and they were talking about different ways that we could attract people to our community and things like that. And one of the suggestions was a um, disc golf course. And I've talked to lots of people about this and uh, the pastor for the Methodist Church is actually a big disc golf guy he's in a league in Tallahassee and he thought that was an amazing idea and definitely would bring a great demographic to the area and he said the upkeep and to get started it's not a huge cost and it's something we maybe could look into implementing at Sands Park and then extending it over to that property <coughs> later on at the um, public works building because you can have up to like 18 holes and so you could start with nine and then later on we could look into extending it over there if it is successful but there's nowhere between Tallahassee and Panama that has a disc golf course and he said that this area would be a great way to bridge that gap and there's a huge league in Tallahassee and he could put us in uh, connection with those people to give us tips and advice on it um, and what, uh, you mentioned this once before, this golf course. Mm -hmm. I did look it up, and it looks to me like it needs more space than what is offered at Sands Park, but I don't know. Well, um, it just depends on how many holes you want to have. Mm -hmm. You can have up to 18 is like a full-size uh -huh. course, but you can do as many as you want. Uh, I have uh, seen and been to the disc, I have used it though, the disc golf course in Lake City. Uh, I'm sure it's an 18 hole. It takes up a lot of space. You've mm -hmm. got to have a lot of land for for that. So, um, and they don't they don't mind going walking down the street to more holes like it. Okay. Some right. of them that I've been to are stretched out really far. Yeah. And it's like a normal golf course. You're going to be doing a lot of walking around. Is it just these little basket things? Right. There are these little metal baskets that you throw these frisbee type things at. Those are holes. <laughs> I always thought that it was like in the in nature out. Oh, no, no. Well, that's what I was thinking later. If we wanted to extend it across the street, there's more trees there that we could just clear the ground, and you would have more obstacles. So, because typically the higher up the numbers go, the harder the goals get or holes. You can have an easy course or an extremely hard course. It just depends on your preference. Okay. But just something I thought about that would be neat to bring more people down here. And that's that's a definite idea. And then certainly uh, the CRA could uh, fund the, the maintenance on it as well as uh, as time goes by. 
and then were you trying to pull up the map or something? I was going to pull up some pictures because I didn't know what it was. Okay, well, while she's trying to do that, do I, I'll, I'll just run over my suggestion. You have a suggestion, Mr. Bell. It's, well, it's a park suggestion. Okay. While we're on the Sands Park, uh, the city of Eufaula has a, a thing called the splash pad. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen them. It's a, it's a. Uh, we're familiar. Very familiar. <laughs> you've had one. Then. No, but they're very expensive to maintain. Well, we, I, I'm not worried. I wouldn't worry about our money expenses at the moment. Okay. I was thinking about the delight of children playing the splash pad. Yeah. <laughs> um, everything's expensive to I maintain. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really, really nice. I can pass it around. But anyway, it's a, there's, there's plenty of room down there for something like this. It's going to take up a lot of room. Uh, kids love it. At Sands Park. The Sands Park or even at uh, the park in um, back on Avenue behind the Tilly Miller? Yeah, the Tilly Miller Park back in the back where it's in a, a neighborhood. Uh, Tilly Miller is not won't be in that expanded district. Yeah, that's why at the Sands oh, yeah. Park. So yeah. when I, I saw these I stopped it and I watched the kids play. It's a, you know on a hot day is it just draws a crowd. I know it. They, yeah. they do enjoy it. It's an alternative. It's certainly something that the city can't afford, though, because of the, the maintenance cost. <coughs> it's, um, and then, um, is there is there possibly the CRA, if the CRA wanted to, to undertake that? Well, that was what it was meant for, was yeah. the CRA project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not a city project. No. So, do we have any, any other items? Um, I'll read my items real quick here. Um, at, uh, from my experience on dealing with the CDBG grant on the Northwest Avenue B project, uh, we end up, uh, because they're big projects, and this is a $650,000 Marine <coughs> Street commercial revitalization project that we were just awarded. It's going to start in six months. Uh, so I would I would suggest to we're going to uh, be paying twenty five thousand dollar match. The CRA is going to pay a twenty five thousand dollar match. Work can commence on August the first. Um, most likely, whenever the first uh, request for funding uh, reimbursement comes in, they'll take that twenty five thousand dollars off. That probably be the response. So we'll have to budget that. It might happen this year. Work can start on August the 1st, and that's going to be Fred Fox for the environmental study. So we may have to fund 25 this year. But I would suggest to, we have right now um, 75, I believe, and 80, 75 for streetlights and 80 for the Marine Street revitalization as a three year commitment. And I would suggest just to make a, a one three year commitment at $100,000 to that project in the event that something comes up. We don't know if we're going to dig up sidewalk uh, down on the southern end of Marine Street and find nothing under there but air or, you know, what are rotten timbers from where they were dumped there when they were dug up when they first built the Riverwalk Park and Marine Street. So I think we need to, we need to keep some money uh, to cover any shortfalls that happen with that project. Um, we may want to budget another twenty thousand dollars for murals. I mean, we did, a, but we may not even get to do the murals this year uh, because it's uh, difficult trying to actually get a, 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 
of owner, property owner, to truly, even though the property owner reached out to us and, and, and donated the wall, now when it comes down to signing the agreement, it's hard to get a property owner to really commit on, on that, uh, having their, their wall painted for 10, 12, 15 years. Um, so, and then working with the DOT, it, it may come to pass, but that's, like Courtney said, the, the application, the agreement application is, is quite detailed. It's not something that's going to happen overnight necessarily, and we have to nudge them to answer us whenever we send questions or res ask for response on certain items, and then we got to send them a reminder, you know, we sent you, we sent you this information last week or two weeks ago, we're hoping to finish the project, and can you answer them, and then they'll answer them. So, 24 murals, um, we, uh, we, I'll bring this up, I brought it up at the last budget, uh, we have, uh, as part of the unmet needs for the Northwest Avenue B project, uh, Northwest 6th Street uh, has already got design and permitting done with this uh, original CDBG uh, money, but uh, there wasn't enough money left over to do the stormwater drainage improvements and convert that rural roadway to an urban roadway that would uh, match uh, 4th Street and Northwest Avenue B. And at the time, it was budgeted at 80, it was a uh, cost estimate was 88350 So I would suggest 100 for that if we, you know, if we wanted to undertake that and, and start piecemealing to finish that project. Um, Christmas decorations, Dustin has uh, requested that we order four or five new Christmas decorations every year to help keep the, the, the Christmas decorations looking new and fresh. Uh, those run about $500 each. Uh, Keisha is going to look into the fireworks for Holiday on the Harbor. Uh, it was has been 2500 but now we have no idea what it will cost. We have no idea. Um, and we uh, do that in partnership with the, um, the chamber. So, you know, maybe we'll find out how much it costs and maybe we'll want the chamber to kick in some money or something, and, you know, as a partnership. And then we want to complete the military flagpole memorial if we don't complete that this year. I don't know what that's going to cost, but hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll have a better idea. Uh, and then um, I have a suggestion, which is kind of along the, the thing, that, like a disc uh, park, a disc golf course, or a splash pad. Uh, but this has been asked for time and time again, is, is, uh, and, and we use it, but you know, this is kind of extravagant, like a splash pad would be, too. Uh, a bandstand, and I have a picture of one here, like they have it, um, and so pass it that way. And then uh, it's a bandstand at Indian Pass Wall Bar, and they could use that as a stage or having bands or something on the weekends or something. We do have a, a traditional style bandstand, I will remind you, at Tilly Miller Park. It's a beautiful bandstand never used. I don't know if it's because it's it's out of the way or we don't have festivals or, or gatherings there or not. But, um, you know, I'm just bringing this to your attention. That we, we could do something like that. Where would it be? The only place I know of. But we're, we're, um, we're um, expanding the district, so we need to open our minds. Where would it be? Well, I was thinking it would be great to have a stage at the old water plant building because that's a great central location to have events. You know, that, that's and not... And it has that, that patio thing. Mm -hmm. We could just put like a pole barn type roof over it. And we could do, you know, fishing tournaments, all different kinds of stuff there. Rent it out, public weddings or whatever. That's, that's possible. And I don't know if that would be considered enhancing Building. No, it wouldn't. Okay. All right. So, so that's an idea. I mean, these are all just ideas. I love it. Okay. <laughs> but now, if we're going to expand, if we're expanding, we need to remember we have other areas. Yeah, we need now. to keep cruising. I need to keep so, cruising. Um, 
the what we really need and, and really get down to the nitty gritty of it is sewer infrastructure. And that is what CRA is really about, is, is doing this kind of infrastructure. Sewer infrastructure helps to remove blight because you're, you're uh, upgrading the, the properties and you're taking out septic. Uh, and uh, we need sewer infrastructure and help me get this right staff along Southeast 12th Street over here and Southeast 11th Street, Southeast D, coming back and forth uh, uh, this way, and I don't know where, but over in here, you know, right. we, need, we, need, area. we need sewer infrastructure real bad. I don't know how much, you know, 100,000, maybe more. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. Will we need a lift station? Does it probably, we we'll probably hook to the Gulf Avenue. Avenue. Mm -hmm. So, um, then we could also complete the um, Southeast uh, Ninth Street right here where um, we're getting more <coughs> paving done with our FDOT scop. We're, as I believe we're gonna try to go down to Edmund's house down there, Edmund and Marlene. But uh, from there, the CRA could pick that up and take it on down to Gulf Avenue and have take that you know, lime rock out and um, make that surface the whole way. By the way, Ms. Courtney, will will those people that uh, worked on delivering that modular, are they going to clean up that Ninth Street where they they really tore that up pretty good? I'm sorry, we'll, we'll make sure it's okay. cleaned up for right. their once they're finished. <clears throat> then where I just talked about, we need sewer infrastructure badly, and I, I'm really going to push that one because that's what the CRA is all about. Uh, is the um, all of that needs to be surfaced over there, um, Southeast uh, Avenue D and Southeast 11th Street, you know, some portions of that. Um, we're gonna need to think about increasing the CRA district and maintenance uh, budget line item because we'll have other areas that may need right of way taken care of or lot cleanup or what, I mean, we're really expanding. We need to open our eyes and, and, and look at this. Water. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the CRA landscape maintenance. Now we won't have, I'm not suggesting to put landscape in the, in the extended district because it's very costly to maintain. And not suggesting any kind of uh, irrigation for landscaping or anything. But we may need to increase the landscape maintenance item or right now the mowing of the right of ways in the core district, uh, the uh, the uh, streets and roads is they're mowing the, the right of way. So, you know, we're going to have to think about how this is going to be managed. And then I put replace the roof on the Oak Caraville water plant, but no, we, we really can't do that. So, you know, we need to look into that because I'm sitting here thinking we, we can't give ourselves a grant, mm -hmm. but can we not replace that? We need to look into that. Yeah. So, then we can't get facade grants or. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can't put it into the building or not. I don't know. I mean, can we put an elevator at the, at the <coughs> history museum? I don't know. I don't think so. I think. I think don't, even if it's like, even if it's like, it. there's something itself. about us you don't pay into the CRA, and we don't pay taxes, so there's something about us not paying into mm -hmm. the CRA. But, and I know we're not allowed to give grants, and even not just the city, even like the county building, like the um, library, and everything. And the churches are the same. If they're not pay, if they don't pay in, they don't really qualify for the CRA. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I'm mixing things up here, but I mean, I remember some of the cases talking about like a police car, right? But that it, I think is the way I remember it. It's used exclusively in the CRA area. Yeah, you have to be able for. to log the Right. You map. have to be able to allocate. Right. And, and I hear what you're saying when you say a roof on a building that's a city building, right? It's not used for the CRA. It's not the CRA offices. Right. So it's, it might be tougher. It is something that should be in the city budget, but it's not. So you're shifting it to the CRA. That's where we're going. That's why we need to get our I guess yeah. so. Uh, Mr. Christopherson, did you have a question? Okay. Ms. Tamron? I've got a couple of observations about possible projects. I don't know if you've observed, I was going to bring you pictures, but I forgot it was today already. Um, 
the dolphins statues that are down at the waterfront. In just the last few weeks, people have knocked the tail off of one of those. They've knocked the noses off of them. And somebody has finally smashed in one of the turtle faces. And I, I, it just makes me, I'm just sick of people that think this is, money grows on trees and if the city does it, you can just destroy it. I don't understand that at all, but I think maybe if we could repair, particularly the turtles not very far off, but with the dolphins, I mean, it's just like a little stick in the ground, a stump uh, that's sort of sharp, so we probably need to, we can't fix it, we probably need to remove it. You know, we've there. had those repaired before. I know. Well, what about replacing While replacing them, mm -hmm. if, uh, the, the, um, I don't know, I, I know I always see kids down there playing on the turtles, mm -hmm. and I know I always, um, take my grandchildren down there to play on them too. They love, they love them. And, well, and you they, were going to complain about them yesterday. Yesterday, I don't need to. Well, I was going to bring that up. Um, it just, it's so irritating. It's been like that forever though. Okay, now Mr. Christoph. I just remembered, didn't uh, Kai Nelson <laughs> offer to put the roof on that at one of those meetings on the water plant, said if you if you all need any help putting the roof on that, I would. He wanted the he wanted, he wanted the debris that came out of there. Oh. He thought we were because he thought the city was <clears throat> talking about destroy you know tearing it all down. Oh, I thought he was going to put the roof on. And then we we had the conversation about what would he likely do with all the contaminated earth that he was taking out of there. I think the contaminated earth has been removed. Well, that's what they want to do. The third round of uh -huh. brownfields money is to be sure it's been removed because there's still minuscule fine. I don't. You okay. might. I don't think you were in on that call, but they have minuscule findings that they they can't close it until something's done to um, ameliorate. The, if that's the right word, the problem. So that's why they put us on the list without us having to apply for it again. Okay. All right. Well, I wrote that down. So, do we um, do we have do you have suggestions, Commissioner Millender? Yes, ma'am. I had some. Okay. You y'all pretty much covered. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, anything. I'm, I'm anything else? Because <laughs> we'll want to, you know. Talk. Yeah, but my 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 thoughts are are too expensive. <laughs> uh, more money than, than we're going to have. Well, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about uh, land acquisition for parking. Thinking about, uh, 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 if you will, a walking dock along the riverfront. Uh, still a dream to see that go back in place again. Uh, in certain areas, I know there's some land acquisitions that have taken place and some changes that 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 may be coming forward, but uh, that's 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 a big thought, a lot of dollars. So good, but yeah. huh? Good. Yes, yes. Yeah. But if there's a lot of money there, because those those things can yes, if they're three or four, they can be a three or four year project. That's right. We don't have to do all that in one year. Year mark money something out for it. So we can spend the money that's going to be available. Because park parking boats is still an issue. It is. I mean, we, we built that that little parking lot we built and it seemed so wonderful. Yeah. Just got <laughs> ate up this past weekend by two thousand trucks and, and trailers who had nowhere to park, and they were all the way up past Tamara's house by. Well, they were past her house, and not a. And all the way downtown and all the way down Highway 98. So. I, don't, I don't know if we could get enough land. It, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and you're probably right, Mayor. Getting enough land would, would be tremendous to cover those times. But even if we could focus on something to that degree to start nibbling at it, uh, 
even if we had, uh, say, a large additional properties for a larger, more parking, uh, not just for the boat activity, but it would include the boat activity. But even on times during the Waterfront Festival, you would have more room to expand and to grow and to do the different things. Marine Street gets tight, real tight. So, but that's some thoughts that I have. But that's 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 long range plans. But if you don't start it, we don't ever get anywhere. So. Now, Courtney, you can't you can't pull it up. But we have we have a good bit of land over there where the water plant is. Exactly. It just needs to be developed. It's it's kind of that's way. It is. Well, it's on a hill too, because it goes up. You know, we're already doing the bottom part. I mean, it that's goes correct. up far. So there's there's some potential there to start. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say, um, it's doing something. that the TDC, their their budget is 17, 1.7. Uh, they got 958,000 <coughs> allocated to Franklin County for infrastructure to build parking lots, or and none of that is, and none of the money is allocated to either one of the cities. Right. And I would like for the, I would like to see you know maybe I don't you know if they would if they would even consider partnering with both cities to you know they could partner with our CRA their CRA to uh, put monies together to be, to develop parking they're getting ready to develop parking the TDC all of the county for their boat ramps and build themselves some fish cleaning stations and such as that, but uh, we, you know, the two cities are never, never offered monies, although both of our cities pay into the, they, we have businesses that pay into the TDC tax. Now the museums uh, in Carabell and uh, um, Appalach, I think Appalach has only two museums, right, that, that uh, get $15,000 sustaining grants. And then Carabell, the city of, has has two uh, owned properties that give fifteen thousand dollars sustaining grants. But all the museums, all throughout Franklin County, get that. It's not like they're doing something special for either of the cities. But it just has to be where a person is just you know you, you just have to keep bringing it up every year. Can you you know will y'all consider working with the cities and leveraging some of this? Well, I think that's a, what you just said covers it very well in my thoughts, and just like you did with the uh, with our uh, grant that we just got approved on Marine Street, and I foresee us running into obstacles that are unforeseen, and we're going to need dollars to help with that. And that was one of my thoughts for today, which you already covered. But uh, we, if we, just as you said, if we were able to kick in some dollars. And we get TDC to kick in some dollars. We can get a grant to put those dollars toward the match. Uh, we can keep building them up, and we can do something substantial. That's just my thoughts. I have a question. I do. Oh, okay. You know, really, we've only got this top part. Of it. We've all, we've got all of this down here. That's the part that's on the only problem is people are lazy and they're not going to park that far away. Oh, they park. They they're a long way. They're already parking. Unless, well, unless that's already taken. That's what I mean. They're going to still continue to park all along. <coughs> the festivals and stuff, that's prime. Well, on, on that at the old water and sewer plant, Casey, you're, you're right about them not walking or lazy. Unless they have to. However, I was down there a couple of mornings that I showed some of the fishermen where that was, and they was tickled to death Dead, because yeah. they didn't have to walk from Commissioner Allen's house down there. Mm -hmm. They were tickled to death to get that. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. But what I was saying there is it's unknown. If it's known, they'll fill it up. Mm -hmm. Maybe we, we need to put some signs. We worked really hard to get all that all that traffic here. Yes. And now we're living with it. <laughs> and it's not going to go away. I mean, the boats are bigger. Our parking lot can't contain the size of a lot of these boats anymore. You know, there's a 600 horsepower on a big boat, three engines, big trucks. We need to work on that for the future. Right. 
or it's going to just be crazy. Anyway, Mayor, that was my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> and I, I will say for parking, uh, the city of Carabell is uh, also providing parking. All of its parking, uh, vehicle parking spaces are full on the weekends. Yeah. Where are these people? They're at Dog Island. They are using all of our parking spaces on Marine Street. Just oh, yes. bam, 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 yes. bam, bam, bam. There's no place for anyone to come and visit the Riverwalk Park or any locals to come and enjoy the pavilion because you can't park because these people have used that parking space, those parking spaces, and they're gone to Dog Island on the, on the, on the ferry. And they don't spend much money in town. They spend no money here. They, they, the boats come and go. And Maybe we need to put some parking meter things on there and get $30 a day or something. So that has been suggested to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, then let's up it to $50 a day. <laughs> How much does it cost at the airport <laughs> to park? 17 a day. Okay. I still have a question. All right. Talking about your idea to expand the river walk, because I love that idea, would we? CRA be able to offer the waterfront business owners some type of grant if they would build dockage in their area to well, support we, that? We would have to, we, we need to look into that because the CRA district ends at the shoreline. Oh. And that's one, I'll just follow up on that. And we, have, and of course, the last year has been fiasco for everyone. DC hasn't been active in a while, which we're talking again, but anyway, uh, that's one of the things that we've talked about since I've been on the commission and with the EDC, is to try to reestablish that working waterfront and grants, <coughs> funding, whatever, uh, private ownership participation, even the owner of the old Tom Crumbs Fish House. I'm, I'm going to be excited to see what happens when the derelict vessels are gone. I know conversations that we've had over the last couple of years. Uh, there's a lot of things that some people are interested in that say they're interested in, but we haven't got to that point that they've kind of got to act. That they're committed. Yeah, but we need to get to that point. I think that's something that you, when you go to a CRA class that you'll see. You'll learn a lot about how CRAs partner with private businesses to right. accomplish what they want. And we might that's not necessarily put the docks in, but there may be incentives that the CRA can offer to these businesses and they put the docks right. in. Right. That's what I was And I have I can't go into detail, but I've talked to Mr. Hartman about the CRA does does do this. They partner with businesses to help with facade grants just like we're doing now to help with landscaping and you know there's there may be a possibility that the CRA might want to partner with the business in the future and how are we going to be able to do that and I've been talking with Mr. Hartman about it and it may come up it may come up but it's common it is very common uh, for CRAs to build parking lots for new businesses or a uh, breeze ways to a parking lot or to help hotels come in some way with the uh, sewer infrastructure, sidewalk infrastructure, so it's not it's not uncommon. That's the way it's done. Yes, Ms. Tamra? One of the projects that's long been in the visioning for the waterfront in Carabell is a commercial dock. I mean, I can't tell you the number of people that own shrimp boats who stopped and said to me personally, if I would love to come back to Carabell if Carabell had a proper dock. And I know that the Millender family that just bought Mr. Watkins' uh, property up there, they've got, I mean, that, so essentially they're friendly, bit, waterfront business, friendly business, and those first, I mean, all the way from the corner, all the way down to the condos right now. Right and now we have these three properties. Yeah. So, but, I, and I don't, I don't know the guy from Tallahassee, but I know that I've talked to the Millender family, I've talked to Benai both about his, and they would both be interested in talking about some kind of a 
economic sharing program that we could find. And that law that's on the books, the San Mayfields Working Waterfronts, was designed for that very purpose. And the big, in Apalachicola, that big dock down there at the, at the waterfront where they have shrimp boats tied up on the outside, they have where large other kind of boats can come up there, but then there's places to have a park where people can watch them offload seafood and all that. And then if it was like we are, there could be restaurants um, stores, whatever, that supported that right along, you know, at the top of that. So those those are all economic opportunities. And I remember in our work with um, the ARPC, they suggested that we look into some of those. And I took the opportunity to talk to Lorraine Osley. Um, she's very, very fond of Carabelle because she grew up her, her family has a house on Dog Island, and she grew up going to Berta's Drug Store, and she has real warm feelings about Carabelle and understands that we no longer have the capacity that we used to have. So I think she'd be a willing, because she kind of got to line up. It takes like three years to do it. you got to line it up, do your homework, and then get your businesses to agree. And, figure out how the CRA works with all that. So I mean, it would take a team of people to work on moving that forward if, but if we could find out what programs the CRA could work with, legal, you know, legally that would make it more effective. I think we've got a good political climate because they're putting so much money in infrastructure from various places, so maybe. I, I think the hardest part would be getting the property owners to truly commit, to truly, truly commit to it. Because just as what we're experiencing now with the, the business wall for the mural, and, and you have said they voice that they want, you well, know, they're interested, but when it gets down to it, they still have to sign that paper. Well, that's what I was saying. We need to get to that stage. Yeah. So, well, right now, and for years, we've just been talking about it. We need to get to that stage and find out if we can take that next step and go for it. And if we can't, we can't. But I think we need to try to get to that step. And that's that's what it takes because yeah. you can't apply for grants yeah. or agreements or anything until you know you've really got a commitment. You know, we know who owns those waterfront parcels now we and, and, and can initiate a conversation. Well, there's been some conversations, but they haven't been any, we, we any conversations this. that have we moved can, anywhere. Well, They've just be, been, what you more said, shade tree conversations. So. Enlightened with our yeah. approach to that yeah. stuff because it's more accessible. But, if, for, but if, the, if, we, if our CRA is kind of looking in that direction and has a little bit of favor in that direction and we can do things legitimately and give a little bit of support and back it up, Maybe we can move it to the next step. And, and we need to remember the American Rescue Plan as well. That's right. Uh, and we heard Ms. Busby say today, today. that uh, they're trying, they're working, trying to. It's uh, was mostly for water and sewer infrastructure and broadband infrastructure, but they're going back to the Fed or the U.S. Treasury to see if they can expand that out and do some other type of infrastructure That's as right. well. So. Uh, we need to keep that in mind and we need to, you know, we're going to get somewhere around, I think, a million dollars. And at this point, Courtney and I, have, we've kind of reviewed the, the guidelines a little bit, but the, it's not final. That's not going to happen until this fall. So it's, and they're not real need, clear. Yeah. They keep going back and asking yeah. hard questions on and they can't give them a So no need to waste our time on it until they get the full, the full uh, rule <coughs> is established. And then, um, we might be able to look at, at that, but until now, Courtney and I have kind of reviewed and we've said, we don't even know if we would qualify for any of this. At, well, you know, very little of it true, at this point. True from what I know, and I don't know everything by any means, and you're right. She said that we may not have answers until Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, so yet, that's still, something that back, we need in, to... In my mind, the backup on that is exactly what the mayor said. If the backup on that is, is there's a lot of water and sewer infrastructure we can utilize that money mm -hmm. 
if that's the only thing that's allowed. Yeah, we can go to town on that. Yeah, well, right over here, as, yeah. you, as you described. Or yeah. clean up Lanark uh, yeah. on the old clay piping or sure. uh, concrete hey, asbestos piping that plenty, they have. Plenty to mm -hmm. utilize. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I, I think we need to kind of wrap it up here on that part of the discussion. We've had a good discussion. I appreciate y'all taking the time. It's, it's been a pleasure. So um, what do y'all think about that? We do need to schedule a budget workshop so that we can then approve that uh, budget. The CRA can approve the budget at our August 16th meeting. And then uh, that would be then presented to the commission on their uh, September 2nd meeting for the commission to approve. And then we would work that, the commission would work that into their, their final budgets that, uh, you know, with our airport, CRA, water, and sewer, and general fund approve all of those later in the month of September, I guess that would be. So we need so, to have it before the next CRA meeting? Well, yeah, it would be good to start our, and get these out of the way, uh, because uh, you have been in a budget process, we have a big budget process for the water and sewer, and a budget process for the general fund. We want to like to get these small ones small. out of the way. The airport is working on the same thing. They, they had their discussion yesterday, and then they're going to have a, a their little a budget meeting, and then they'll approve that at their August meeting, and then they'll submit that for us to approve in the same schedule as this one. So we try to get these small ones kind of out of the way so we can work on the big stuff in, in August and September. The first week of August, I'm busy. August 9th, 10th, 11th, and 13th. Those I'm free. Oh, you're free the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 13th? You know, to try to have a workshop um, so that we can, can approve it at the uh, August 16th meeting. What do, you, what do you ladies look like on the 9th, 10th, and 13th, 11th? 9th is good. Okay. I would rather do a 10th okay. a Tuesday than a Monday because I that kind of get stuff. Get Monday can get in. hairy. Uh, what, time, what time do you want to do it? Okay, is, is 10 o'clock, I mean, August the 10th okay for everyone? Yeah, um, school starts back that day. Right <laughs> oh, school starts back that day? Yeah. Is that good or bad? Good for me. Okay. <laughs> Sooner the better. <laughs> what time are we thinking? Um, Y'all set the time, 10 o'clock or 1.30, one or the other, something like that. So we can get it done before lunch or wait till after lunch and do it. And Mr. Hartman, you won't need to attend. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. No, no, no. I'm, he doesn't I'm not usually, usually right 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 Yeah, he doesn't usually participate. Don't bring the lawyer to read. Money. Talk about money. Lunch. Yeah, 1.30 works right. best for me. Okay, is 1.30 okay with everyone? I prefer afternoon too. Okay, is that okay for you, sir? 1.30? All right, can we have a motion for that, August 10th at 1.30, budget workshop? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. And that's motion by Commissioner Brown, second by Commissioner Miller. <coughs> is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. Okay, then, uh, do we have any other items brought forward by the CRA members today? I have, a, I have a question. It goes back to what we're talking about. I, when we had the ARPC workshop with Caroline here, we discussed the commercial usage of the, the um, big dock that we have, but that was paid for with a grant that stipulated it could only be used for private, but um, recreation. recreation. But I think Dan was going to look into it because it's been 30 years or something like that. It's been a long time. I know Carolyn was going to look into that. She got some information from me, but I don't know whatever came. But she did send an email this afternoon that she's wanting on the agenda for our next meeting to present that study <coughs> to us. Okay. She, she got the information from me with all the grants that, you know, it has it on the side down there, every grant that's ever funded anything, and she got all that information, and she was going to check on it. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. We'll ask her. Use it. Try to remember to ask her when she's here. That would be a huge and, uh, asset. Yeah, it would be. A, I mean, you can get two shrimp boats there. It's not really strong. It, it, the problem, it, there's just that one piece of it that was built for big boats, the one where the Coast Guard boat used to come. Uh -huh. But all that other is floating. It's um, well, it's floating, but it was it wasn't built for for commercial uh -huh. strength, and um, which has caused a few problems. And, you know, people parking it. But um, I remember when my office was down there one day, a lady showed up from the state, whatever the recreation grant was that it had been funded for, and she's. I remember her distinctly standing in the door of my office screaming at me because there was a shrimp boat tied up at the dock and she just was off you know she was like you can't do that and blah 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 and it's recreational and that's you know non-purposes but i don't i don't know when the timing on it wears out it was fairly new at that point when it sunsets yeah because the the dock that the grant that built the fish cleaning station the floating dock and all that was done. Oh, wait. Yeah, I was going to say 2007, 2008, something right around in there. So, but I wouldn't. Does it have a statute of limitations? Now, Courtney and I did get approval from the DCP <coughs> to remove the fish cleaning station, even though it was done with the, these these type of grants, mm -hmm. uh, because we we have such a um, issue with the waste disposal uh, and I'm, I'm trying to work on that and I'll be bringing it to the Commission one of these days soon but um, has it not gotten better it seems better when we have uh, when we have an attendant when we have a police a badge down there it, it's fine <laughs> so um, anyway is there anything else then it looks like we're making our funding on the derelict vessel. Yay. Yeah. Uh, we submitted that application and they sent me back a grant agreement and the mayor signed it. Yay. And we get it executed. So it, it hasn't been awarded, but that sounds real hopeful. That's extremely wonderful. Yes. It's got a grant agreement. Yay. All the ifs, ands, and buts, though, the documents that accompany it, it's, it's uh, amazing. And the FWC officers are being officers coming out and they do monitoring of debris removal, just like they do for hurricane debris removal monitoring. Uh, but uh, it's, it's quite, the, quite the ordeal. And that will only remove the Anthony Diane and the boat that's at uh, sunset. sunset. So we're still not cleaning up the Tom Crumb dock yet. No, they can't get a letter of authorization on that uh, spare time. It's so really disappointing. Mm -hmm. They think that the Miss Carabelle is under the F and Diane and they don't know if there's anything left of it. And they did want to issue a letter for the Miss Carabelle until they remove the Anthony Diane. Which I think if they're going into a claw, they may be picking up some of the Miss Carabelle. <laughs> the less the better. The more they take, the better it is. Unless it's a bell or an artifact, then we'd like to have it at the museum. <laughs> okay, then. So is, there, is there anything else? That's something. I have nothing. All right. Okay. All right. May we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll adjourn second. Okay. And that motion is by Commissioner uh, Millender and second by Commissioner Allen. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, any any uh, opposed? Okay, then that motion carries. And thank you all for a good discussion.